the feds are going to take interest in it and they're going to find a location where she said you were, that something happened and it was sex trafficking or some kind of allegation of sexual assault. And if they find one woman to corroborate what was said, bro, 30 million is the least of your problems. Try you and R. Kelly making the greatest album ever in prison. as far as um we have to get your take uh <laughs> uh puff that did he uh let's just start with uh let's start with coming out of nowhere did he has a lawsuit cassie mm -hmm. hits him with a 30 page uh indictment in regards to wanting to be uh she wasn't going after criminal charges but just she wants to be compensated for pain and suffering and everything else that she asked for um your thoughts when you seen that indictment 30 pages in the settlement within 24 hours of the uh when they first presented right. the lawsuit you as a lawyer what were your thoughts right when you seen uh that take place because again the world it caught the world by storm so I was with a group of brothers on a guy's trip, and the first thing they asked me about that, first thing I said to them is either his lawyers committed malpractice or they did not convince him well enough. So I'm, let's say I'm his lawyer. Cassie's lawyer sends me this, this lawsuit. I read through this. I get to page six. I said, hey man, get your checkbook ready. I don't know what the number is yet. We're not gonna pay this, but we're gonna pay something. He sits at me and he said, man, we ain't paying nothing. I said, bro, the accusations that she's made in this document, if they find a hint of truth, or once it goes public, the feds monitor everything and you're a public figure. The general population is going to read this. The news are going to report on it. The feds are going to take interest in it, and they're going to find a location where she said you were, that something happened, and it was sex trafficking or some kind of allegation of sexual assault. And if they find one woman to corroborate what was said, Bro, 30 million is the least of your problems. Try you and R. Kelly making the greatest album ever in prison. Right? Like, you two are going to make music that's going to extend to anybody that would buy it that will be, like, it's going to be off the chain, too. But, but, but the problem was, at that moment, he should have shut that down on all my high high profile clients in 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 dealing with situations like that whether they're high net worth or whatever if we have a situation i play the angles i play the angles like pool i am not finna try to hit the eight ball just because the seven ball and i got solids is in front of it thinking i can make it i'm finna hit something else he should have left that alone and paid her and then made her. Now, the one issue I do have, I have a, I do kind of have some issue with Cassie's attorney because, man, he's doing too much. Every time somebody says something, he is on top of that. And no, nah, man, you, no, but you represented your client. Your case is over with. It is no need for him to make, you know, Puff Daddy had orange juice. He shouldn't have no orange juice. He should be drinking. He he drinking men and no man, sit down somewhere. Sit down somewhere. He doing too much. Maybe it was very personal for him. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it's personal, man. But 
the criminal justice system still has to play itself out. As a defense attorney, what angle could you have seen from Puff, Puffy's side? Pay this girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> pay this woman. Yeah. Pay this woman and move on. Take the L. I thought that's what he did, though. Didn't he? Pay? No. No, 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 no. It's a big difference. Okay. What he just said, that petition should have never seen the light of day. How did, how did it see the light of day? He didn't. Ref he refused to pay. Oh, oh, okay. Now, okay. Oh, oh, this all could have been avoided. It could have been avoided. I didn't I know that. Public record. Oh, wow. Public record. Yeah. So, no, he did do it to himself. He, arrogance, arrogance possibly. Well, who knows what it was? We don't, yeah, we, don't, we don't know what it was. That's the million dollar question is, what conversation took place and what advice did he get prior to that lawsuit being filed? And sometimes you have clients who are just hell bent on being, you know, be honest with you, if I had a client like that, I would fire the client. Like a billionaire though. Like I would a fire, billionaire. I would, so I would fire I'm not you. about to be strong on. I would fire you. I would fire you because I would tell you if you can't listen to my instructions on what you paid me to do, then you paid me to to advise you to this point. You need to find new counsel. Because I am not fan to be caught up in this. Now my reputation is is at is being questioned. Correct. You know, because now as a lawyer, I'm asking myself, hey man, did you advise your client? And you should have bought him more time. So you can work on him to pay some money. Correct. Right? But was it you or was it him? Or was it the two of you guys together? that basically pissed this woman off and her attorney that made them file this lawsuit? It's too many questions. And sometimes you don't get a truthful client to kind of know what tools you're working with bruh. in the shit. Bro, so, bro. Yeah, yeah. Did you read? Like you said, page six. Pay, I page, didn't have to read the rest. Yeah, page six. Pay, oh my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he did what? <laughs> like, huh? Even if it's not true. I shook his hand. <laughs> what the? I was at his, I sat on that couch. You know, you just, you're like, nah, man. Hey, look, any, and especially if you are famous, right? What are they, what is it? What do they always say? They they applaud you while you 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 rise. Yeah, but on your yeah on and, your fall. And, yeah. Right, and then you know when you fall, they trying to stomp on you. Oh yeah, man, pushing. you 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 no, ain't nobody love you that much. Nobody. No one. So Larry, can I ask you? Um, your, oh, yeah, I was just saying, do you think you could defend P Diddy now, right now? Do you think you, if you could step in, do you think that you could save, his save him somehow? That's the world is all against him. What did I say? I don't make promises. Great idea. I, I, you know, you, you, you find some angles, but the, the, the issue that he has is he created a tidal wave of evidence that people have probably been holding on to. That video, they oh. allegedly they paid the security to get rid of that video. Correct. Did it look gone to you? Yes, <laughs> it, looked, it looked very much there in yeah. HD. Caught a fork. Oh, no. Does he have a case against that security? No. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they found that on him. I think he kept the video. And I so think, reg yeah. reg regardless of the fact, man, it, it's if you have something like that that has come out and all the allegations that were made, what else is out there that potentially can come back and get you? You know. You know. Do, do you listen to any hip-hop? I'm a hip-hop head. Drake and Kendrick. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Does, no, does, I'm does, not does, getting into that. No, I'm no. Not. Does Drake have a case against Kendrick? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, listen, both Drake and Kendrick, 
I don't have anything. Look, man, <laughs> y'all take care of your families, live a good life, and just keep it peaceful. Keep it peaceful. Can I get your moral take on statutes of limitations? In the Puff Daddy situation, um, New York opened up the statute for people to call on uh, assault mm -hmm. um, that happened. You know, they, they opened it up to where when you look at something that they say, well, seven years, uh, let's just say, let's just throw that number yeah. out there. If this happened six years ago, you got a case. But if it happened seven years and three months ago, we can't do nothing about it. Morally speaking. Morally speaking, I'm always going to go with the law, man. It's I'm always going to go with the law. Because anytime that we start picking and choosing what we're doing, then at some point, somebody can say, well, I think lynching of people of color is cool. I mean, it's been done before. I mean, and they still here. Why we can't go back to doing that, right? I don't need, I need something that's solid. I don't need something that at the at somebody's whim, they feel a certain way because if they do that, I guarantee you, you won't get the same protections as someone else. And how far and how much, you're an adult, right? You're an adult. I understand because I represent these women and, and, and children. But I can only operate within the confines of the law. And I think it's dangerous to open it up to a free-for-all based on the situation. Even though I think some people are monsters. But you know the great thing about monsters? They are creatures of habit. So if I don't get you now, I'll get you later. I always ask this question, which is, is again, it's, it's, and again, we're just talking morals. It's just interesting that laws based on an uh, invisible line of a state could change just from touching one side of the road to crossing the other. You talking about Texas and Oklahoma and marijuana? Let's just say, let's just say that. How I could be on this side of the road and this could be my fate, or I could be on that side of the road and that is my fate. Like it's you wanna know something even more dangerous? Go ahead. On one side of the road, you could have a hundred extra feet or a hundred less feet. And so you think you're safe, but you're on the wrong side of the road. The and <laughs> state line actually goes yeah, like yeah, this. It's, it's, this part, that parcel zigzags. To where yeah, it's yeah. still over here. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, when you look at the THC laws in this country, it's it's actually a federal question. Some lawyer is probably gonna, if a lawyer sees this that does this, they might take this and use it. But it's a federal question. Anything that prohibits the free flow of commerce is a federal question, and does not the ability for a a uh, what do you call them? The shops the the sell THC. What do you call them? Um, uh, it's dispensary. Dispensary. Yeah. dispensary. You see how? Uh, Learn. <laughs> the, the, the the dispensaries are. If I got a dispensary in Oklahoma, but the population and I'm on the border, and the population is Texas is greater than the population around me. The same distance in Oklahoma, you're preventing me from a client base that could help my business based on a law that you have that is basically chaotic to all the other places. So in Texas, let me give you another PSA. It's a lot of PSAs yeah, no, today. We, we want them. It's a lot of PSAs today. PSA, people, stop smoking and driving. Whoa, whoa why not? Why not? That is the equivalent. That is that is the equivalent of drinking and driving. Okay, okay, say so. And you can be charged with a DWI. If you take Flintstone vitamins and they cause you to black out and it's perfectly legal to have, it's not a controlled substance, 
you can be charged with a DWI. Some lawyers might get on here and say, ah, that's not true, but the law says anything that you do that prevents you from having the mental or physical capacity to operate a motor vehicle, you could be charged. Okay, so I gotta stop popping edibles and driving. Yes. So another PS, another PS. Two miles per hour down the road. Another PSA. Edibles are a felony. Talk to them. <laughs> they cannot go on a carry on. Edibles are a felony in Texas. So you have a great time in Colorado. You go get some of the strong stuff in Seattle. You say, man, I got to bring this back with me. You leave the airport. You get through TSA with it. And you decide to drive home. And you decide to go see your girl. You know, you ain't seen her in a while. You leave at 2 in the morning. You're driving home. You're not even high. You got two bags of gummies. Man, I hope it was a good night because you might not be seeing your girl for a while. You might be a drug dealer by that. <laughs> Could you please tell them about the pins as well? Anytime that you take THC and it's not a leaf. So I worked with, uh, I got my education from, uh, it's a group of lawyers who are working to legalize marijuana and work with that here in Texas. And so one of the things is by law, they have to wait or basically uh, from what I've been told and you can double check and fact check me on this one. But if it's a leaf, they have to uh, basically test the leaf. If there's no leaf in a substance, you basically enter the, enter the era of crack versus cocaine. Anytime that you take that THC from one form and transfer it into another form, you have now created a controlled substance because you have chemically enhanced something that was not meant to be or has not been chemically enhanced either by a scientist or, or a licensed scientist or under some, some kind of regulation. And so you've put yourself in harm's way. <music>